Are drugs absorbed through the stomach? Some drugs, such as aspirin and alcohol, are able to be absorbed through the lining of the stomach. They penetrate the mucous layer of the stomach and enter the circulatory system. Therefore, alcohol in the stomach will be absorbed before nutrients from a meal reach the bloodstream. Why is it important to protect the kidneys? The kidneys are protected from day-to-day -day jolts and shocks by the adipose tissue and renal fascia. If the fibers of the dense connective tissue break, the kidney will be able to move to the abdominal area. Movement of the kidney called floating kidney or nephroptosis is dangerous because the ureters of renal blood vessels may become twisted how do kidneys help vitamin d be available for bone growth The kidneys turn vitamin D into an active hormone called calcitrol, which helps bones absorb the right amount of calcium from blood. If the kidneys are impaired, bones do not get enough calcium, either because the kidneys fail to turn vitamin D into calcitrol or because they allow too much phosphorus to build up in the blood. The excess phosphorus draws calcium into the blood and blocks it from getting to the bones. What gland is found on top of the kidneys? The adrenal glands are closely associated with the kidneys. With one adrenal gland sitting on top of each kidney and embedded in fatty tissue that encloses the kidney. How does food leave the stomach and move to the intestine? The pyloric sphincter, located between the stomach and duodenum, or small intestine, is never completely closed. Water and other fluids pass continually from the stomach to the duodenum. A small amount of chyme moves through the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum with each peristaltic contraction. The remainder of the chyme is forced back into the pyloric region of the stomach for further mixing. What are the functions of the urinary system? The functions of the urinary system include regulation of body fluids, removal of metabolic waste products, regulation of volume and chemical makeup of blood plasma, and excretion of toxins. What is a calorie? A calorie is the amount of energy, heat, required to raise 1 gram, 1 milliliter, of water by 1 degree Celsius. 
A kilocalorie, kcal, is the amount of energy required to raise 1 kilogram, 1 liter, of water by 1 degree Celsius. The kilocalorie is the unit used to describe the energy value in food. Since the calorie is a relatively small unit of measurement. For example, if a chocolate chip cookie were completely incinerated. The amount of heat energy released would be enough to raise the temperature of 1 liter of water by approximately 300 degrees Celsius. What is the length of the human intestine? The small intestine is about 22 feet, 7 meters, long. The large intestine is about 5 feet, 1.5 meters, long. What is metabolism? Metabolism, from the Greek metabol, meaning change, refers to the physical and chemical processes involved in the activities of the body. It includes the conversion of nutrients into usable energy contained in ADP, the production and replication of nucleic acids. The synthesis of proteins, the physical construction of cells and cell parts. The elimination of cellular wastes, and the production of heat, which helps regulate the temperature of the body. How long does it take for chyme to move through the small intestine? It takes an average of 1 to 6 hours for chyme to move the length of the small intestine. What causes a stomach ulcer? Historically, doctors thought that genetics, anxiety, or even spicy foods caused stomach ulcers. While these may worsen the pain of an ulcer. Scientists now believe that the gastric ulcer is caused by a bacterium called Helicobacter pylori. Researcher Barry J. Marshall, 1951 observed that many ulcer patients had these bacteria present in their systems. In 1984 Marshall designed an experiment to determine whether there was a link between Helicobacter pylori and stomach ulcers. He consumed a large amount of the bacteria and waited. After 10 days, he developed ulcers. Marshall shared the 2005 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine with J. Robin Warren, 1937, for their discovery of the bacterium. Helicobacter pylori and its role in gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. What is cosmetic dehydration? Cosmetic dehydration is the practice of taking large doses of diuretics to cause temporary weight loss. It has been used by fashion models and bodybuilders. 
but it is a dangerous practice because it can cause electrolyte imbalance and cardiac arrest. Why do people burp? Burping, technically called eructation, from the Latin ructere. Meaning belch, is a normal occurrence that results from an abundance of air in the stomach. Nearly a half a quart of air is typically swallowed during a meal. Much of this air is relieved as a burp or belch. What is a nephron? A nephron is the functional working unit of the kidney. Blood is filtered in the nephrons and toxic wastes are removed. While water and necessary nutrients are reabsorbed into the system. Each nephron produces a minute amount of urine, which then trickles into the renal pelvis. From there it goes into the ureter and eventually collects in the bladder. What is a nephron? A nephron is the functional working unit of the kidney. Blood is filtered in the nephrons and toxic wastes are removed. While water and necessary nutrients are reabsorbed into the system. Each nephron produces a minute amount of urine, which then trickles into the renal pelvis. From there it goes into the ureter and eventually collects in the bladder. How many nephrons are there in one kidney? There are approximately 1 million nephrons in each kidney. How many nephrons are there in one kidney? There are approximately 1 million nephrons in each kidney. What are the major parts of the nephron? The major parts of the nephron are the renal corpuscle, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubule. Each part has a significant, distinct function in urine production. Inside the renal corpuscle is a tangled network of about 50 capillaries. The glomerulus, where filtration occurs. The blood pressure within the capillaries forces water and dissolved substances out of the capillaries and into the renal tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule starts at the glomerulus and continues into the loop of Henel. About 65% of the original filtrate is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. The loop of Henel is a critical region where the filtrate is further adjusted for water and solute balance. The distal convoluted tubule removes additional water from the filtrate. 
until the final concentration of the urine is approximately equal to that of the body fluids. What are the major parts of the nephron? The major parts of the nephron are the renal corpuscle, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of henle, and the distal convoluted tubule. Each part has a significant, distinct function in urine production. Inside the renal corpuscle is a tangled network of about 50 capillaries. The glomerulus, where filtration occurs. The blood pressure within the capillaries forces water and dissolved substances out of the capillaries and into the renal tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule starts at the glomerulus and continues into the loop of henle. About 65% of the original filtrate is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. The loop of henle is a critical region where the filtrate is further adjusted for water and solute balance. The distal convoluted tubule removes additional water from the filtrate. Until the final concentration of the urine is approximately equal to that of the body fluids. What is the vasa recta? The vasa recta are the long, straight blood vessels that extend into the medulla of the kidney and parallel to the course of the loop of henle. There is a distinct difference in solute concentration between the fluid in the loop of henle and the plasma concentration in the vessels of the vasa recta. This mechanism is called counter-current exchange. It results in the reabsorption of water and solutes between the fluid in the loop of henle and blood. What is the vasa recta? The vasa recta are the long, straight blood vessels that extend into the medulla of the kidney and parallel to the course of the loop of henel. There is a distinct difference in solute concentration between the fluid in the loop of henel and the plasma concentration in the vessels of the vasa recta. This mechanism is called counter current exchange. It results in the reabsorption of water and solutes between the fluid in the loop of henle and blood. What is urea and where is it produced? During the process of metabolizing proteins, the body produces ammonia. Ammonia combines with carbon dioxide to form urea. The human body can tolerate 100,000 times more urea than ammonia. It is the most abundant organic waste produced in the body and it is eliminated by the kidneys. Humans generate about 0.75 ounces, 21 grams of urea each day. What is urea and where is it produced?
During the process of metabolizing proteins, the body produces ammonia. Ammonia combines with carbon dioxide to form urea. The human body can tolerate 100,000 times more urea than ammonia. It is the most abundant organic waste produced in the body and it is eliminated by the kidneys. Humans generate about 0.75 ounces, 21 grams, of urea each day. What are the major vessels that enter and leave the kidneys? Each kidney receives blood from a renal artery. The kidneys receive 20 to 25 percent of the total cardiac output, or approximately 2.5 pints, 1,200 milliliters, of blood per minute. After circulating through the kidney and nephrons, the blood is collected in the renal vein. The renal nerves innervate the kidneys. What are the major vessels that enter and leave the kidneys? Each kidney receives blood from a renal artery. The kidneys receive 20 to 25 percent of the total cardiac output, or approximately 2.5 pints, 1,200 milliliters, of blood per minute. After circulating through the kidney and nephrons, the blood is collected in the renal vein. The renal nerves innervate the kidneys. How much fluid do the kidneys remove from the blood daily? The kidneys filter about 48 gallons, 182 liters, of blood daily and produce about 4 ounces of filtrate per minute. About 1.5 to 2 quarts. 1.4 to 1.9 liters of urine is eventually excreted per day. How much fluid do the kidneys remove from the blood daily? The kidneys filter about 48 gallons, 182 liters, of blood daily and produce about 4 ounces of filtrate per minute. About 1.5 to 2 quarts, 1.4 to 1.9 liters, of urine is eventually excreted per day. How much blood is filtered by the kidneys in an average lifetime? The entire blood supply is filtered through the kidneys 60 times per day. The kidneys in a person living 73 years filter almost 1.3 million gallons of blood. How much blood is filtered by the kidneys in an average lifetime? The entire blood supply is filtered through the kidneys 60 times per day.
the kidneys in a person living 73 years filter almost 1.3 million gallons of blood. How do the kidneys help control red blood cell production? The kidneys produce erythropoietin, a hormone that affects the number of circulating red blood cells. How do the kidneys help control red blood cell production? The kidneys produce erythropoietin, a hormone that affects the number of circulating red blood cells. What is a kidney stone? Kidney stones, or renal calculi, are the precipitates of substances such as uric acid, calcium oxalate, calcium phosphate, and magnesium phosphate that usually form in the renal pelvis. A stone passing into a ureter can cause very severe pain. Approximately 50% of kidney stones pass from the body on their own. Stones were once removed surgically. But most are now shattered with sound waves in a procedure called lithotripsy. Stones may form in the ureter or bladder, in addition to the kidneys. What is a kidney stone? Kidney stones, or renal calculi, are the precipitates of substances such as uric acid, calcium oxalate, calcium phosphate, and magnesium phosphate that usually form in the renal pelvis. A stone passing into a ureter can cause very severe pain. Approximately 50% of kidney stones pass from the body on their own. Stones were once removed surgically. But most are now shattered with sound waves in a procedure called lithotripsy. Stones may form in the ureter or bladder, in addition to the kidneys. What is the name of the process when stones are formed in the urinary tract? The process of stone formation is called urolithiasis, renal lithiasis, or nephrolithiasis. What is the name of the process when stones are formed in the urinary tract? The process of stone formation is called urolithiasis, renal lithiasis, or nephrolithiasis. What are the symptoms of kidney failure? Symptoms of kidney failure include excess fluid buildup. Due to inability of the kidneys to produce enough urine. The resulting excess fluid increases blood pressure, leading to hypertension. 
An indirect symptom of kidney failure is anemia due to the decreased production of erythropoietin by the kidneys. Erythropoietin controls the rate of maturation of red blood cells. Without adequate red blood cells, a person will become tired and short of breath. What are the symptoms of kidney failure? Symptoms of kidney failure include excess fluid buildup. Due to inability of the kidneys to produce enough urine. The resulting excess fluid increases blood pressure, leading to hypertension. An indirect symptom of kidney failure is anemia due to the decreased production of erythropoietin by the kidneys. Erythropoietin controls the rate of maturation of red blood cells. Without adequate red blood cells, a person will become tired and short of breath. What are some causes of nausea and vomiting? Nausea, the sensation of having the urge to vomit, and vomiting. The emptying of the contents of the stomach through the mouth, may be caused by a variety of different reasons. Some common causes of nausea and vomiting are, gastroenteritis, commonly known as stomach flu. From bacterial or viral infections food poisoning overeating migraine headaches brain injury or Concussions inner ear and balance disorders motion sickness hormonal imbalances Especially during the first trimester of pregnancy certain toxins, such as alcohol drugs, such as chemotherapy agents, etc. What is the vasa recta? The vasa recta are the long, straight blood vessels that extend into the medulla of the kidney and parallel to the course of the loop of henle. There is a distinct difference in solute concentration between the fluid in the loop of henle and the plasma concentration in the vessels of the vasa recta. This mechanism is called counter-current exchange. It results in the reabsorption of water and solutes between the fluid in the loop of henle and blood. How does diverticulosis differ from diverticulitis? Diverticula are bulging. Sac-like pouches in the wall of the colon that protrude outward from the wall of the colon. Diverticula appear most often in individuals over 40 whose diet is low in fiber. In diverticulosis the pouches are present but the individuals do not have any symptoms or discomfort. In diverticulitis, the diverticula are inflamed and often infected. When undigested food and bacteria are caught in the diverticula, patients experience pain, either constipation or increased frequency of defecation. Nausea, vomiting, and low-grade fever. 
In severe cases, surgical removal of the infected area of the colon is necessary. Changing to a high fiber diet usually relieves the symptoms. What type of diet is recommended for individuals with celiac disease? A gluten-free diet is the only treatment for individuals with celiac disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune digestive disease that damages the small intestine and interferes with absorption of nutrients. The villi in the small intestine are damaged or destroyed whenever. Sufferers of celiac disease eat products that contain gluten. Gluten is found in wheat, rye, and barley. Once the villi are damaged, they are not able to allow nutrients to be absorbed by the bloodstream. Leading to malnutrition. What are trans fatty acids? Trans fatty acids, or trans fats, are made when manufacturers add hydrogen to liquid vegetable. Oil a process called hydrogenation creating solid fats like shortening and hard margarine. Hydrogenation increases the shelf life and flavor stability of foods containing these fats. Diets high in trans fat raise the LDL, low density lipoprotein, or bad cholesterol. Increasing the risk for coronary heart disease. Which foods contain trans fats? Cakes, crackers, cookies, snack foods, and other foods made with or fried in partially. Hydrogenated oils are the largest source, 40%, of trans fats in the American diet. Animal products and margarine are also major sources of trans fats. Since January 2006. The U.S. government has directed that the amount of trans fat in a product must be included in the Nutrition Facts panel on food labels. How does chyme move through the small intestine? Chyme moves through the small intestine by two different types of contractions. Peristalsis and segmentation. Peristalsis is the rhythmic contractions that move chyme through the gastrointestinal tract. Segmentation involves localized contractions of small segments of the small intestine. These contractions mix the chyme with the secretions of the small intestine, gallbladder, and pancreas. The nutrients are brought into contact with the microvilli in the small intestine. The chyme is slowly propelled toward the ileocecal valve. Unlike peristaltic contractions, which are directional, the contractions of segmentation are not directional. Therefore, in order to keep the chyme moving downward, the duodenum contracts more frequently than the jejunum or ileum.
What are the functions of the large intestine? The large intestine is mostly a storage site for undigested materials until they are eliminated from the body via defecation. Although digestion is complete by the time the chyme enters the large intestine and most absorption has occurred in the small intestine. Water and electrolytes are still absorbed through the large intestine. How do the kidneys help control red blood cell production? The kidneys produce erythropoietin, a hormone that affects the number of circulating red blood cells. What is bulimia? Bulimia is an eating disorder in which individuals binge eat frequently often several times a week or even several times per day. Sufferers of this illness may eat an enormous amount of food in a short time, consuming thousands of calories. Then they will purge their bodies by vomiting or using laxatives and slash or diuretics. What is urea and where is it produced? During the process of metabolizing proteins, the body produces ammonia. Ammonia combines with carbon dioxide to form urea. The human body can tolerate 100,000 times more urea than ammonia. It is the most abundant organic waste produced in the body and it is eliminated by the kidneys. Humans generate about 0.75 ounces, 21 grams, of urea each day. How is body mass index, BMI, calculated? Body Mass Index, BMI, is a number that shows body weight adjusted for height. The formula to calculate BMI is, BMI equals, weight in pounds x703, slash, height in inches, 2. What are the major vessels that enter and leave the kidneys? Each kidney receives blood from a renal artery. The kidneys receive 20 to 25 percent of the total cardiac output, or approximately 2.5 pints. 1,200 milliliters, of blood per minute. After circulating through the kidney and nephrons, the blood is collected in the renal vein. The renal nerves innervate the kidneys. What health risks are associated with obesity? People who are obese are more likely to develop a variety of health problems, including Hypertension dyslipidemia, 
for example, high total cholesterol or high levels of triglycerides. Type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis. Sleep apnea and respiratory problems, some cancers, endometrial, breast, and colon. How much flatulence is produced daily? Most individuals produce nearly 1 pint, 473 milliliters, of flatus, gas, daily. Passing gas 10 to 20 times per day is considered normal. Diets that consist of an abundance of carbohydrate-rich foods, such as beans, produce greater amounts of gas because a greater amount of undigested carbohydrates enter the large intestine. The mixture of different gases causes the characteristic odor associated with flatulence. How much blood is filtered by the kidneys in an average lifetime? The entire blood supply is filtered through the kidneys 60 times per day. The kidneys in a person living 73 years filter almost 1.3 million gallons of blood. How does the definition of overweight differ from obesity? Both overweight and obesity describe ranges of weight that are greater than what is generally considered healthy for a given height. An objective measure of these terms is based on body mass index. An adult with a body mass index of 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight. An adult with a body mass index greater than 30 is considered obese. Which gases are found in flatus? Flatus consists mostly of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen. Small amount of oxygen, methane, and hydrogen sulfide are also a part of flatus, gas. How much water enters the large intestine daily? Nearly 95% of the water that enters the digestive tract is absorbed by the small intestine. Only 0.5 quarts, 0.47 liters, of water enters the large intestine daily. Absorption of water in the large intestine helps to avoid dehydration. Unabsorbed water is excreted with feces. What is the name of the process when stones are formed in the urinary tract? The process of stone formation is called urolithiasis, renal lithiasis, or nephrolithiasis. How do saturated fats differ from unsaturated fats?
saturated fats and unsaturated fats are dietary fats. Saturated fats do not have double bonds between their carbon atoms and are solids at room temperature. Unsaturated fats have one or more double bonds between their carbon atoms and are liquids at room temperature. They are considered to be oils. Polyunsaturated fats have many double bonds. What is a nephron? A nephron is the functional working unit of the kidney. Blood is filtered in the nephrons and toxic wastes are removed. While water and necessary nutrients are reabsorbed into the system. Each nephron produces a minute amount of urine, which then trickles into the renal pelvis. From there it goes into the ureter and eventually collects in the bladder. What is the purpose of villi? The mucosa layer of the small intestine has many finger-like projections called villi. Villi, from the Latin. Meaning shaggy hairs, and the smaller microvilli increase the surface. Area of the small intestine dramatically, allowing for greater absorption of nutrients. If the small intestine were a smooth tube without villi, it would have a total absorptive area of 3.6 square feet, 3,344 square centimeters. The existence of villi effectively increases the absorptive area of the small intestine. By a factor of nearly 600 to more than 2,200 square feet, 2,043,800 square centimeters. What is a kidney stone? Kidney stones, or renal calculi, are the precipitates of substances such as uric acid, calcium oxalate, calcium phosphate, and magnesium phosphate that usually form in the renal pelvis. A stone passing into a ureter can cause very severe pain. Approximately 50% of kidney stones pass from the body on their own. Stones were once removed surgically. But most are now shattered with sound waves in a procedure called lithotripsy. Stones may form in the ureter or bladder, in addition to the kidneys. What is anorexia? Anorexia simply means a loss of appetite. Anorexia nervosa is a psychological disturbance that is characterized by an intense fear of being fat. This persistent fat image, however untrue in reality, leads the patient to self-imposed starvation and emaciation to the point where one-third of the body weight is lost. Clinical diagnosis of anorexia is determined when patients weigh at least 15% less than the normal healthy weight for their height. Many patients do not maintain a normal weight because they refuse to eat enough or avoid eating. Exercise obsessively, 
induce vomiting, and slash or use laxatives or diuretics to lose weight. For women, this causes the menstrual period to stop. What are the causes of obesity? Obesity is a result of an individual consuming more calories than she or he burns. Genetic, environmental, psychological and underlying medical problems may all be factors that lead to obesity. Underlying medical conditions may include hypothyroidism, Cushing syndrome, depression, and certain neurological problems that can lead to overeating. Drugs, such as steroids, used to treat certain medical conditions may cause weight gain, too. Scientific study has indicated that obesity is linked to heredity. However, since family groups also share the same basic diet, it is difficult to separate genetics from environment. The average American diet tends to include many foods that are high in fat. The standard portion size for many foods has increased over the past several years. Supersized portions available at fast food restaurants have more calories. This diet coupled with a lack of physical activity leads to obesity. In addition, many people overeat in response to negative emotions such as sadness, anger, and boredom. What are the major parts of the nephron? The major parts of the nephron are the renal corpuscle, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of henle, and the distal convoluted tubule. Each part has a significant, distinct function in urine production. Inside the renal corpuscle is a tangled network of about 50 capillaries. The glomerulus, where filtration occurs. The blood pressure within the capillaries forces water and dissolved substances out of the capillaries and into the renal tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule starts at the glomerulus and continues into the loop of henle. About 65% of the original filtrate is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. The loop of henle is a critical region where the filtrate is further adjusted for water and solute balance. The distal convoluted tubule removes additional water from the filtrate. Until the final concentration of the urine is approximately equal to that of the body fluids. How long do the undigested remains from the digestion process remain in the large intestine? The undigested remains of the digestion process stay in the large intestine for 12 to 36 hours. Which valve separates the small intestine and the large intestine? The ileocecal valve serves as the boundary between the small intestine and the large intestine. The large intestine frames the small intestine on three sides.
How much fluid do the kidneys remove from the blood daily? The kidneys filter about 48 gallons, 182 liters, of blood daily and produce about 4 ounces of filtrate per minute. About 1.5 to 2 quarts, 1.4 to 1.9 liters, of urine is eventually excreted per day. How does binge eating disorder differ from bulimia? Individuals with binge eating disorder also consume large quantities of food in a short period of time. However, unlike individuals with bulimia, there is no purging. What are eating disorders? Eating disorders are medical illnesses in which patients become obsessed with food and their body weight. Research indicates that more than 90% of those who have eating disorders are women between the ages of 12 and 25. The main types of eating disorders are anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. A third disorder, binge eating disorder, is still being investigated by researchers. What is the role of the small intestine in nutrient processing? The small intestine is the site of most nutrient processing in the body. The first step is to break down the large complex structures of all nutrients, including carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, into smaller units. Most absorption of these nutrients also takes place in the small intestine. How many nephrons are there in one kidney? There are approximately 1 million nephrons in each kidney. What are the symptoms of kidney failure? Symptoms of kidney failure include excess fluid buildup due to inability of the kidneys to produce enough urine. The resulting excess fluid increases blood pressure, leading to hypertension. An indirect symptom of kidney failure is anemia due to the decreased production of erythropoietin by the kidneys. Erythropoietin controls the rate of maturation of red blood cells. Without adequate red blood cells, a person will become tired and short of breath. How many distinct regions are in the large intestine? The large intestine consists of three distinct regions, 1, the cecum, 2, the colon, and 3, the rectum. 
the cecum is the first section of the large intestine below the ileocecal valve. The appendix is attached to the cecum. Since the colon, ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon, is the largest region of the large intestine. The term colon is often applied to the entire large intestine. The rectum, rectum, anal canal, and anus, is the final region of the large intestine and the end of the digestive tract. What conditions can cause chronic renal disease? Diabetes mellitus is the leading cause of chronic renal disease. It accounts for about 44% of new cases each year. The second leading cause is hypertension, high blood pressure. What conditions can cause chronic renal disease? Diabetes mellitus is the leading cause of chronic renal disease. It accounts for about 44% of new cases each year. The second leading cause is hypertension, high blood pressure. What is kidney dialysis? Kidney dialysis, also known as hemodialysis, is used when the kidneys are not functioning or are improperly functioning. An artificial membrane is used to regulate blood composition, particularly the removal of toxic substances. The patient's blood flows through artificial membrane tubing which is immersed in a solution that differs in concentration from the normal concentration of blood plasma. Critical to this process is the composition of the dialysis fluid, which permits retention of needed substances while wastes are removed. Dialysis is usually carried out three times per week. What is kidney dialysis? Kidney dialysis, also known as hemodialysis, is used when the kidneys are not functioning or are improperly functioning. An artificial membrane is used to regulate blood composition, particularly the removal of toxic substances. The patient's blood flows through artificial membrane tubing, which is immersed in a solution that differs in concentration from the normal concentration of blood plasma. Critical to this process is the composition of the dialysis fluid, which permits retention of needed substances while wastes are removed. Dialysis is usually carried out three times per week. How long does it take to complete dialysis? The procedure usually takes about 4 hours, but the exact time needed for dialysis is dependent on the following. 
how well the kidneys are functioning the amount of fluid retained. The amount of waste present in the blood body weight type of artificial kidney used. How long does it take to complete dialysis? The procedure usually takes about 4 hours, but the exact time needed for dialysis is dependent on the following. How well the kidneys are functioning the amount of fluid retained. The amount of waste present in the blood body weight type of artificial kidney used. Does dialysis cure kidney disease? Dialysis does not cure kidney disease. It does the work of your kidneys, but it cannot replace them permanently. Does dialysis cure kidney disease? Dialysis does not cure kidney disease. It does the work of your kidneys, but it cannot replace them permanently. Which human organ was the first to be transplanted? The first human organ to be successfully transplanted was the kidney. Dr. Joseph Murray, 1919, performed the transplant in 1954 in Boston, Massachusetts. The patient, Richard Herrick, lived for eight years after receiving the new kidney from his identical twin brother, Ronald Herrick. Which human organ was the first to be transplanted? The first human organ to be successfully transplanted was the kidney. Dr. Joseph Murray, 1919, performed the transplant in 1954 in Boston, Massachusetts. The patient, Richard Herrick, lived for eight years after receiving the new kidney from his identical twin brother, Ronald Herrick. How successful are kidney transplants? The one-year success rate for kidney transplants is 85 to 95 percent. How successful are kidney transplants? The one-year success rate for kidney transplants is 85 to 95 percent. What are the risks associated with a kidney transplant? As with any transplant, Rejection of the foreign body is the major cause of transplant failure.
recipients of kidney transplants have to take immunosuppressants for the rest of their lives. What are the risks associated with a kidney transplant? As with any transplant, rejection of the foreign body is the major cause of transplant failure. Recipients of kidney transplants have to take immunosuppressants for the rest of their lives. How long is each ureter? Each ureter is 10 to 12 inches, 25 to 30 centimeters, long. The ureters extend from the kidney into the bladder. They begin as thin, hollow. Narrow tubes and widen to 0.5 inches, 1.7 centimeters, as they enter the bladder. Urine is transported to the urinary bladder via the two ureters. How long is each ureter? Each ureter is 10 to 12 inches, 25 to 30 centimeters long. The ureters extend from the kidney into the bladder. They begin as thin, hollow. Narrow tubes and widen to 0.5 inches, 1.7 centimeters, as they enter the bladder. Urine is transported to the urinary bladder via the two ureters. Where is the urinary bladder located? The urinary bladder is located in the abdominal cavity. In males, it is anterior to the rectum and above the prostate gland. In females, it is located much lower, anterior to the uterus and upper vagina. Where is the urinary bladder located? The urinary bladder is located in the abdominal cavity. In males, it is anterior to the rectum and above the prostate gland. In females, it is located much lower, anterior to the uterus and upper vagina. How much urine can the urinary bladder hold? The urinary bladder is highly deistensible and can vary in its capacity. As urine fills the bladder, it can expand to about 5 inches, 12 centimeters. Long and hold 1 pint, 473 milliliters, of urine at moderate capacity. The bladder can expand to twice that capacity if necessary. It usually accumulates 300 to 400 milliliters of urine before emptying. But it can expand to hold 600 to 800 milliliters.
How much urine can the urinary bladder hold? The urinary bladder is highly deistensible and can vary in its capacity. As urine fills the bladder, it can expand to about 5 inches, 12 centimeters. Long and hold 1 pint, 473 milliliters, of urine at moderate capacity. The bladder can expand to twice that capacity if necessary. It usually accumulates 300 to 400 milliliters of urine before emptying. But it can expand to hold 600 to 800 milliliters. Why do pregnant women have an increased need and urge to urinate? Early in a pregnancy, hormonal changes in the mother make the urge to urinate more frequent and more urgent. Towards the end of a pregnancy, the increased size and weight of the uterus pressing on the bladder reduces its capacity to hold urine, causing an increased need to urinate. Why do pregnant women have an increased need and urge to urinate? Early in a pregnancy, hormonal changes in the mother make the urge to urinate more frequent and more urgent. Towards the end of a pregnancy, the increased size and weight of the uterus pressing on the bladder reduces its capacity to hold urine, causing an increased need to urinate. How does the urethra differ in males and females? Urine is transported to the outside through the urethra, which is a thin muscular tube that extends from the urinary bladder to the exterior of the body. The length and structure of the urethra differs between males and females. In males, the urethra is about 8 inches, 20 centimeters long and extends from the urinary bladder to the exterior. It has the dual function of transporting semen as well as urine out of the body. The female urethra is only about 1.5 inches, 3 to 4 centimeters. Long and extends from the bladder to the exterior opening. How does the urethra differ in males and females? Urine is transported to the outside through the urethra, which is a thin muscular tube that extends from the urinary bladder to the exterior of the body. The length and structure of the urethra differs between males and females. In males, the urethra is about 8 inches, 20 centimeters. Long and extends from the urinary bladder to the exterior. It has the dual function of transporting semen as well as urine out of the body. The female urethra is only about 1.5 inches, 3 to 4 centimeters. Long and extends from the bladder to the exterior opening.
Why is screening for colorectal cancer important? Colorectal cancer is the most common cancer of the digestive system. Screening tests are important to diagnose a disease prior to developing symptoms. When detected in the early stage, the five year survival rate for colorectal cancer is greater than 90%. In addition, polyps, which are not malignant, may be removed during a screening procedure, thus avoiding cancer. The screening guidelines suggested by the American Cancer Society for both men and women over the age 50 with average risk for colorectal cancer include, 1 a fecal occult blood test, FOBT, or fecal immunochemical test, FIT, every year, or 2 flexible sigmoidoscopy every 5 years. Or 3. An FOBT or FIT every year, plus flexible sigmoidoscopy every 5 years. Or 4. Double contrast barium enema every 5 years, or 5. Colonoscopy every 10 years of the first 3 options. The combination of FOBT or FIT every year, plus flexible sigmoidoscopy every 5 years, is preferable. How long does it take to complete dialysis? The procedure usually takes about 4 hours, but the exact time needed for dialysis is dependent on the following. How well the kidneys are functioning the amount of fluid retained. The amount of waste present in the blood body weight type of artificial kidney used. Which two diseases are considered inflammatory bowel diseases? Inflammatory bowel disease IBD, is the general term for diseases that cause inflammation in the intestines. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis belong to the group of illnesses known as IBDs. Crohn's disease may affect any part of the digestive tract, but it most often affects the ileum. Ulcerative colitis occurs only in the inner lining of the colon, the large intestine, and the rectum. Abdominal pain and diarrhea are the most common symptoms of both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Both diseases are chronic, ongoing diseases, although periods of remission of not uncommon. What is cosmetic dehydration? Cosmetic dehydration is the practice of taking large doses of diuretics to cause temporary weight loss. It has been used by fashion models and bodybuilders. But it is a dangerous practice because it can cause electrolyte imbalance and cardiac arrest. What are the sources of water gain and loss per day? The main sources of water gain are drinking and ingesting fluids. Such as water contained in food, and water produced as a byproduct of metabolic processes. 
The main sources of water loss are urine formation, evaporation from the lungs, breathing. Evaporation from the skin, sweating, and through the feces. Which human organ was the first to be transplanted? The first human organ to be successfully transplanted was the kidney. Dr. Joseph Murray, 1919, performed the transplant in 1954 in Boston, Massachusetts. The patient, Richard Herrick, lived for eight years after receiving the new kidney from his identical twin brother, Ronald Herrick. What percent of a person's intake of water comes from drinking water? Only about 47% of a person's daily water intake comes from drinking. Nearly 39% of water intake comes from eating solid food. Since water is a major component of many foods. For example, fruits and vegetables may contain more than 90% water. What gland is found on top of the kidneys? The adrenal glands are closely associated with the kidneys. With one adrenal gland sitting on top of each kidney and embedded in fatty tissue that encloses the kidney.